1968 or thereabouts, I believe that was the year, uh, a trio of brothers named the Bee Gees. I'm sure we've all heard of the Bee Gees. If you don't remember, you certainly remember their teeth. <laughs> uh, they released a song, they wrote a song called Words. Do we know the song Words? Now I thought this morning we'd join just on the little chorus of it, just a couple of verses of the chorus. <clears throat> Let's get ourselves ready. So it starts, goes... It's only words, and words are all I have to steal your heart away. We'll do it once again. It's only words, and words are all we have to steal our heart away. Heart away. Big finish. There you go. Give yourself a round of applause. <clears throat> it's only words, and words are all we have to steal the heart away. And it's true, isn't it? The importance of words. Now, I don't know if you've noticed or heard in the news for the last couple of weeks, there is a big trial taking place in America uh, involving the actor Johnny Depp. Do we know Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp, Pirates of, Pirates of Caribbean. I was going to say Penzance then. Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know if he was in that one, but... Anyway, big trial taking place. He's suing, once again, his ex-wife to the amount, I believe, of in our money, 38 million. 38 million. He claims that um, she's defamed him. Now, defamation, just a bit of news here for those who don't know, slander and libel, slander and libel. Slander is what we say, libel is the written word. Now, she's wrote something in a paper in America claiming or hinting of abuse. Anyway, so Johnny's he's suing, and it's on, it's on now, it's going each day. He claims she's defamed him with her words. And so, now you might have gathered by now, the title of today's sermon, little talk, is What Would the Lord Say? What Would the Lord Say? And we'll start this morning by taking a, uh, just a, a review once again of our New Testament reading which we know came from the letter of James, who is uh, accredited as being the Lord's brother. And the, the letter that he sends was one of general instruction to all churches sent out there. And as we heard in the first two verses, verse 1, and, 1 to 2, he starts by saying, we should not be teachers. Now some commentators have thought this is aimed at ministers and preachers more so. Brothers, and myself, I certainly believe that he's, he's aiming it, it at all of us. In as much as none of us should be judges of other people. Looking to people, oh, see what they're doing, see how they're going. Because he tells us, we're all sinners. We're all sinners. Indeed, in verse 3 he goes on to say, for those who don't believe they sin... <laughs> Even by word, even by word you will sin. Because by that small thing, the tongue, it has control over our whole being. He uses some wonderful illustrations in the next three to three verse, verse four to five, in which he draws our attention to the way in which just a small thing can control the big things. The bridle in the mouth of the horse can lead the horse. Only small, but will lead the whole horse. He gives the illustration of the helm, the rudder on the ship. The big ships out there, and the small rudders guiding it. So something very small can control the whole being. In the same way he relates the tongue, our tongue, can be the control of how we're seeing our whole being. He makes relation in verse 5, he says, So it is with the tongue, small as it is, it can boast of great things. But just think of a forest fire, it can be set by the tiniest of flames. 
Now, I know we've all seen the, the wildfires in Australia and various places throughout the years in America. It all started from a spark somewhere. The smallest spark created the decimation. He goes on to use even more vivid words. Describes it as the fire of hell. This is the tongue and the creation, what it can do. We come to verse 6, and this is where the apostle really goes to town on this matter. A tongue is like a fire, he says. It is a world of wrong occupying its place in our bodies and spreading through our whole being. It sets on fire the entire course of our existence with a fire that comes from hell. Strong words, you may say. Strong words there from the Apostle. But let's just consider just some of the words or the things we may do. This week, maybe. Did you express at any time this week maybe some words of impatience? Standing in a queue. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Come on, you hurry up, will you? Hurry up, come on. Annoyance, maybe? A little bit of anger? You bang your thumb? Oh, you are. Oh, oh, the, the words just boom. A <laughs> little bit of envy, maybe? Ah. See what, uh, see what they got down the road there? It's in there, it's in there. Not as good as ours, though, is it, love? Not as good as ours. <laughs> A little bit of gossip, that's the one we all get into a little bit. The old joke there out there, you know what it's like, you know. And you know what she's like, you remember what she was from years ago. We've all done it, we've all done it. We've all engaged in words that in the pureness of God will be regarded as sin. The commandment tells us Not to speak of anybody in a blasphemous way or in a false manner. We all engage in it, and this is what the apostle knew. He knew that our tongues and our mouths are used often to express things which are contrary to the pureness of holiness of our God. At verse 10, he then reminds us, which really hits the souls, friends. This week, if you've used an expletive or you've gossiped a bit or you've gone angry with somebody, verse 10 tells us words of thanksgiving and cursing pour out of the same mouth from which we praise God. From which this morning we sang hymns. My Lord, my God, my Saviour. You see what she's doing down the road. I love you, Lord. Yeah, you heard better. Same mouth, friends. Same mouth. Makes us think, doesn't it? We praise God. And then, libeling and slandering people down the road. The illustration that he used following that is wonderful. He says, a fountain doesn't give off spring water and salt water. An apple tree won't bear a grape. It's true, isn't it? By nature, these things don't come together. And yet our mouths will do this. Verse 7, he said, we can tame animals. Big elephants, lions, we've seen them in the zoos. A horse, yes, tame the wild horse. But we can't tame the tongue. <laughs> Man can't tame the tongue for some reason. We can't, can we? We just blah, 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 and it's out there. And don't think it's just us, friends. You know, don't be too harsh on yourself saying, well, Lee, we, you know, we, we, we're not brains of Britain, you know, we Consider this. The most powerful man on God's earth at the moment is the President of the United States. The most powerful man, he has the greatest authority, he has the most military power. President Joe Biden, otherwise known as Sleepy Joe. Not that I call him Sleepy Joe, he's a powerful man. But just three weeks ago, President Biden, I'm sure doing his best to placate and sort this problem out with Ukraine, said, we will sort this out. I won't do an American accent, we'll sort this out. 
and we'll have President Putin out. Around the world, murmuring started. France, you can't say that. You can't say that. Within an hour, his advisor were backtracking. No, no, the president didn't mean to say that. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean to say he would get rid of Putin. Because, of course, President Putin hear this thinks, well, am I going anywhere? I don't think I am. Back, backtracking. And this is the president of the United States of America. Words went out. He couldn't tame them. Out they went. My dear friend, Mr. Cull, you know Mr. Cull? 103 now, it's 103 now, Mr. Cull. <laughs> he, he gave us, he gave, I don't know where he retains all these things, but he spoke last week of a kite being let out. Well, I'm sure we've all flew kites as a child, and you're trying to read it back in. You can read it back in with some difficulty when the wind's blowing. But even God himself can't bring back in words when we put them out there. They go out there, friends, and, they, and people hear them, and they take them in. Good or bad, or indifferent. So we have to be careful what we're saying. And what causes such words? This is the point. What causes it? Because he said, man can't tell. What causes it? Well, he tells us it's defilement. It's the corruptness of our hearts, friends. We can't get away from it. The fall of man. The Lord himself says, Matthew, chapter 15, verses 10 to 20, and I'll just quote, if I may, just three verses from, that, from that, uh, that passage. The Lord himself says, at verse 11, chapter 15, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into a person's mouth that makes him ritually unclean. Rather, it's what comes out of it that makes him unclean. At verse 18, the Lord says, continuing to speak, to those who were gathered around him. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these are the things that make a person ritually unclean. And at 19, for from his heart come the evil ideas which lead him to kill, commit adultery, and do immoral things. These are the things that make a person unclean. Friends, from the fall of man, we, we sin every day. It's there every day. But what do we do? We know this, we know we do, but what do we do about it? Well, our Old Testament reading, the Exodus, chapter 4, verses 1 to 15, read for us this morning by Gillian, gives us some guidance on what we can do to overcome this. Because that's what we want. Our reading from Exodus, which was, according to the commentators, 1,300 years, 1,300 to 300 to 400 years before the birth of Christ. 1,400 years. And we have Moses saying to the Lord, God, what if they don't listen to me with the words? What, do, what if they don't listen? And we have a wonderful demonstration here in what happened next, in the next few verses. We heard that God said to him, put your hand in your robe, which he did. Take your hand out. Leprous. Covered in the white spots of the illness. Leprosy. The God then said, put it back in your robe. And pull it out. And the hand was clean. Just by those few words, that reading there, we see the power of God over our being, over our bodies. In the same way, friends, it's God who cleans our defiled heart. Now, you may not believe it, like Moses, he still was reluctant, as we heard in verse 10, he says... I'm not eloquent, Lord. I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. And God reminds him and he reminds us also. Who made man's mouth, he said. Who made it? He's our creator. He made the mouth we speak with. He tells him, bring Aaron, your brother. I will give you both the words, he said. I will give you the words. 
Thy, I will be with thy mouth and teach you what to say. And here, here there, friends, that's where the answer comes from. It's God, through his spirit of Jesus Christ, who cleanses our souls, cleanses our hearts, cleanses our minds, who gives us the words to speak. And to speak the words of spirit. When we forget about the worldly things and just look to the Lord, we will be given the words of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, Peace. God will give us the words when we turn to him and look unto him in the spirit. He will cleanse the heart. The Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 35 when speaking of the prophets who spoke falsely he said to advise the people around to look to the Bible. What has the Lord said? And this is the advice we give, or should give to people about. When they need advice, what does the Lord say? But more importantly, say to ourselves, what would the Lord say? What would the Lord say when you're, ha when you're angry? Next time you're angry, friends, Think to yourselves, what would the Lord say? You're just about to burst out that expletive. Oh, you, what would the Lord say? Those words of bitterness, what would the Lord say? Those words of impatience in the queue, what would the Lord say? Words of jealousy, what would the Lord say? Words of gossip, what would the Lord say? And I believe now, just as a means of administration, it's, it's cricket season. Am I right? Is it cricket season? Sue, Rod? It's cricket season. What would the Lord say? Use it as a bat, my friend. I'm not very good at cricket. I've never played, to be fair. It's like that, Rod? Fair like that? That's more like golf. To be fair, that's a golf stance, but it doesn't matter. What would the Lord say is the bat? Bang! Hit the angry words out the, out the ground. What would the Lord say? Bang! Hit them with what the Lord would say instead. Today, when you go to use an angry word, bang! What would the Lord say? Hit it with the Lord's words. Hit the devil right out the other side. He'll be trying to get in. Bang! What would the Lord say? We have to remind ourselves every day, friends, because otherwise we will slip. A friend of mine just this week... Uh, a student of mine from three years ago, she got in touch and said, Lee, I, I've got a problem, you know, a relationship. What do I know? But there you go, a relationship, but there you go. She asked me, should I call him back? She said, Lee, he hasn't been in touch. Should I call him back? I said, no, don't call him. Really, Bill, really yourself back in, Lee. Hold on. I said, no, 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 no. Forget that. Call the man. What does the Lord say? When asked, should we forgive? I said, he said, forgive Seven times? No, 77 times. I had to reel myself in, friends, because we do. My first thing was, no, don't call the man. But then I reeled myself in. What would the Lord say, I thought? What would the Lord say? And so I said, call the man back. Look to the Spirit each day, friends. Each morning. Regular cleansing. You get up and wash your face each morning. Go to the Spirit in prayer and cleanse our hearts and ask for guidance in our words each day. Let us confess to the Lord and rely on him solely. Confess that we know we, our words will be of sin, but we rely upon him. Because those are the things that come from our mouth, aren't they? Love, peace, joy, confession. These are the things the Lord wants to hear. These are the things coming before him, acknowledging. You remember last week, friends? For those who were gathered, I stood before you with my mouth, this mouth here. I confessed <laughs> that yes, I'd sinned. You recall I, I invited a young lady here to join me for dinner. You remember this from last week? 
I, for those who weren't here, I, there was a young lady. I said, would you like to join me for dinner? Oh, thank you. Yes, I will. I turned here two minutes later and another young lady chatting here. Chat, 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 chat. <laughs> Wasn't the best thing to do. But I came before you, friends, and I confessed what had happened. With this mouth. Because this heart felt defiled and sinned for what I'd done. And you recall, I said to you, God will say, oh no, you're not getting away with that. When we speak as the Lord would want us to speak, when we confess and acknowledge, when we've used words as we shouldn't, that's when we see the Lord truly in action. Last night I went to dinner with this young lady here. <laughs> the Lord forgave me. I didn't go with this one, no. <laughs> the Lord, I was sure that was off. You saw me last week, you knew that was off. It was finished, it was done. In front of you, I shared with you, because James the Apostle also says, confess to each other and pray for each other. I thought it was off. <laughs> with this mouth, I confess to you, cleanse my heart, and the Lord heard. And must have thought, okay, you know, I'm going to give you a chance here. It was a lovely evening. And I'm hoping she'll come and join us at some point now. She's a Christian herself. So that's wonderful, isn't it? What we can do when we speak with the tongue properly and think, what would the Lord say? What would he say, friends? In conclusion... I started, we, st we started by saying, it's only words, and words are all we have to steal the heart away. And it is true. Because with your words, good or bad today, we will touch the heart of someone with something we say. We'll lift them with joy, or we'll bring them down with gossip. It's only words, and words are all we have to touch the hearts of people. So let us, today, friends, let us every day and every time say, what would the Lord say? And may God bless you, and amen. Lead me, O oh Lord, won't you lead me?